Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Uh, and welcome to all who have gathered on site and uh, to those who have gathered online. Thank you. Um, we are uh, in this space um, uh, primarily because the symphony is setting up next door um, and we need to keep groups in, in their own spaces. Um, and also the heat works better in here. Um, <laughs> is an added bonus. Um, uh, we are uh, looking back at last Sunday's uh, readings for the 24th Sunday after uh, Pentecost. Um, this coming Sunday uh, will be uh, the Feast of Christ the King, uh, so life in the, uh, in the church uh, moves through the seasons, and we are coming to the end of a season this week, uh, and we'll begin uh, the Advent season and the whole church year uh, anew um, at the... Uh, the weekend after that, so the end of November. Uh, we continue in your order of service where we read, Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church. And so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, our queen and governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honor and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honor, and humbly obey her in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God world without end. Amen. O Lord, we beseech thee, absolve thy people from their offenses, that through thy bountiful goodness we may all be delivered from the bands of those sins, which by our frailty we have committed. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our blessed Lord and Savior. Amen. taken from the fifth chapter of the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, beginning at the first verse. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for the day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or the darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, and put the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet of the hope of salvation. 
For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Here ends the lesson. Thanks to you, Lord. Psalm 123. Our eyes look to the Lord, O God, until he, shoot, until he shows us his mercy. You lift up my eyes to you enthroned in heaven. As my eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of the maid to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God until he shows us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have more than enough of contempt. Too much of the scorn of the indent, rich, and the derision of the proud. Lord be with you. And, and also with you. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus said, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five pounds, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five pounds went off at once and traded with them and made five more pounds. In the same way, the one who had the two pounds made two more pounds. But the one who received the one pound went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of the old slaves came and settled accounts with him. Then the one who had received the five pounds came forward bringing five more pounds, saying, Master, you handed over to me five pounds. See, I have made five more pounds. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two pounds also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me Two pounds. See, I have made two more pounds. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in, in a few things. I will put you in charge of many. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who received one pound came forward, saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gather what you did, and not gathering where you were saved. And I went and hid your talent. I went, I went around. Here your talent was in the ear. Here your master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You did, you did. Not my slave, master of me. My money with the bankers, money with, and I, on my own with, with the interest. So take the talent from him. So give the talent if you can, can can, but to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance, and give it to the one with three. To all those who have, more will be given. So the talent will have an abundance. And to the one in whom has nothing, to those who have nothing, even what will they be given? And it will be taken away. Worthless slave, broken into the utter darkness, missing. Even will be, they will be weeping and Furnishing seeds. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O God, Jesus.
Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Now please be seated. I don't know whether it's a particularly Protestant thing. Um, uh, I, I count half of my family to be uh, Protestant. My mother's family is, is Anglican. My father's family, though, is Catholic. But I, I feel like I've got a, a, a Protestant work ethic sort of tug um, and, and catch myself occasionally, um, for which I, I try to repent every time it happens. But occasionally I catch myself thinking in terms of deserving poor and lazy poor. It's not something about which I'm proud. And it's usually something I, I move away from pretty quickly and repent of when it happens. But nonetheless, those thoughts of grading the poor have managed to creep in occasionally. And so here we have it, the parable of the talents. We, um, anytime I try and teach this in, in Bible study, it, we run into to trouble with this one. It, it always causes great discussion. As with any parable, everything and everyone mentioned in it often stands in for something or someone else. We can get hung up on the value of a talent, uh, mostly because it's not a unit of measure that we use any longer, and, and we can always debate who the characters are in the story. Traditionally, the slave owner is, is sometimes cast as God, and the various slaves as people of varying levels of piety. Um, in a nutshell, the parable is the story of a lazy slave who buries the talents, think a lot of money, wheelbarrows full of money. One talent representing approximately 130 pounds of silver, so 500 or five talents is 650 pounds of silver. Uh, anyways, the master gives him a vast sum and he buries it and receives exactly what an insolent and do nothing slave deserves a, a demeaning lecture, a, a getting booted to the outer darkness um, of society where he'll suffer greatly uh, for his poor stewardship of his master's money. In the parable, you can hear echoes of a segment of society's perspective about social assistance, perhaps, or universal health care, or, or pretty much anything else that takes care of those in need at the cost of, of the larger society. In some circles, and even with myself on rare occasions, there's um, an obsession with, with lazy people taking advantage of the system and getting their basic needs met at the expense of others. It's the story of the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. We heard today, for all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. And from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. If I weren't already familiar with that verse, I think I would think that it was some new and twisted rewrite of the Bible. Nevertheless, it has caused, over the centuries, some to think less of the poor and the marginalized of society. Unfortunately, sometimes they love it because it condemns the lazy slave, completely missing the point of the parable. For these pieces of scripture to condemn the slave, you have to read them entirely out of context. You have to completely ignore the fact that this passage is bookended by the Beatitudes that we read on All Saints Day two weeks ago, or two and a half weeks ago, where Jesus assures us that the poor are blessed. Hello. And in five short verses, in, in what we'll hear next week, Jesus says, for I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. In order to condemn that third slave, we have to ignore that Jesus concludes the entire section of Scripture with these words. 
Truly I tell you, just as you did not do, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Those lines are the moral of all of these stories, all of these parables that Jesus has been teaching us through these past several weeks. So ask yourself, who in the parable is the least of these, the margin? From the last uh, verse of what we shared today, as for the worst, worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It is the third slave. He is the least of these, the marginalized. Truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. The parable of the talents is not a condemnation of that third slave. It is a condemnation, I think, of the master. So, in this reading of the parable, the master can't be cast as God. The master is us, those of us who have any amount of power. Every time we live into our positions of power and then judge those who are struggling on what we see as the margins of society, the master is us. Every time we assume a right to our privileges and label those without those same privileges as lazy, the master is us. Even when our places of plenty are so ingrained that we live into the, the abuse that they cause by carelessly supporting uh, the slave labor required to provide the goods that we want at rock bottom prices, the master is us. It is the master that is being condemned here in this way of reading the parable. And along with that master, the words that he speaks. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. Jesus didn't say, just as you did not do it unto one of the more productive of the least of these, you did it unto me. The parable of the tenants is a parable of a master whose place of power gets in his way of understanding Jesus' lesson. The parable is the story of a slave who is willing to risk everything, even in the face of fear, to the point of being shunned to the outer darkness and the dark corners of society for the sake of standing up to abusive power by simply being unwilling to participate. In many ways, there's great humor in how they're all labeled. The master is truly a slave to a system that suggests he is more powerful and more deserving than the slave, so much so that he somehow believes it's a good thing to call attention to the fact that he reaps where he does not sow. The slave, on the other hand, while still a slave to his circumstances and the brutal power of the master, is the master of his own response to the power structure that instills fear into those who have little power within the system. He confronts the system and its representative, his master, and he confronts us, I think. The parable that confronts the masters of the world it confronts those who have plenty and want more. It confronts those who assume some right to what they have because of their social position. It confronts those who believe the privileged places they were born into makes them more deserving than those who weren't born there. It confronts those who believe they have what they have because they aren't lazy like the people who don't have it. This is a parable that confronts the power. Those of society who are bent on preserving the power that they were by chance or uh, accident of birth born into. 
they should perhaps fear the comeuppance um, that Sorry. They should perhaps fear what is being offered to the least of these in the text. Our impulse to uh, uh, get your hands off my stuff sort of perspective should cause us to tremble at the judgment that this parable places on those who only focus on their own wealth and their own interests. This is a text about equality. The story of resistance, of facing down the powers that be right by refusing to participate in the system of dominance that they control. So yes, we are the master. But we can be the third slave as well. Can be our story. It is a call to arms, a, an encouragement in the face of inherited privilege and power. The Anglican Communion, for instance, the, the worldwide confederation of Christians in communion with each other and with the Archbishop of Canterbury, based on the traditions of the church and its collective reading of scripture has adopted the five marks of mission. The mark that should likely cause us the most lost nights of sleep is the one that undermines our own history as the established church in many parts of the world and in this part of the world. The mark of mission reads, the mission of the church is the mission of Christ to seek to transform unjust structures of society, to challenge violence of every kind, and to pursue peace and reconciliation. The question is, are we willing to let go of the fear that the relinquishing and sharing of power will inevitably cause? Are we willing to live into the story of the third slave who confronted the powers that be? Are we willing to risk what we have in order to confront the system that marginalizes us all and holds us all short of the glory of God. Here, the, the poor are with us here in this place, in this town, in this county, in Canada, and in the world. The marginalized, by definition, find themselves on the edges of this society. The mission of the church is the mission of Christ to the world, a mission that overturns the tables of the temple chiefs, that undoes the traditional power imbalances, that invites all into relationship and an experience of radical love and inclusion. God loves you. You are called to let the love that God shows to you radiate to those that you encounter that they might come to know that God loves them. And you are called to love without limit, as you are, in fact, loved without limit. For it is in loving the unlovable of our society and of the world that we will find ourselves showing the love of God to Jesus. Himself. Let us pray. God of the covenant, even when we fall into sin, you remember that you have chosen us to be your people. Awaken us to the power and the gifts you have bestowed upon us for the good of creation. May we be trustworthy in all things, working with purpose to increase your realm. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
I invite you to rise as you are able, and together let us profess the faith of our baptism as we sing. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are they that considereth the poor and the needy. The Lord shall deliver them in the time of trouble. Thank you. Thank you so much. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, for ever and ever. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Let us pray. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Let us pray for peace on earth and for the unity of all Christian people. Let us pray for our missionaries at home and abroad. Let us remember before God those of our brethren who have departed this life and are at rest, especially thinking of people that have passed away this year, Shandell Davis, Yvonne Gardner, Margaret O'Neill, June Arthurs, Patricia Lowe, James Duffield, Roy Edward Jarvis, Zara Di Giacinto, Alex Trebek, Kevin Benninger, Mary Louise Shalton, and Anya Steele. Also remember people from the Bulletin, Andrew Mooney, 
William Harvey and Isabel Christina, uh, Christina Bridge, Mary Fletcher. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all, we humbly and beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the ways of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, that they, thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace, and grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our queen and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion, religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially Bishop Todd, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacrament, Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy holy kingdom among the nations. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any adversity, especially thinking of Wendy, Bill, Carol, Sheldon, Mike, Claudia. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseeching thee to give us grace that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples and with them be partakers, partakers of this holy and heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, judge of all, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all good things, and keep you in everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. 
God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy to all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with my spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right, and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, 
so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the beloved people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, a new space to learn new patterns of worship. Um, so um, please do come forward, uh, family group by family group. I'll place communion for you here on the pedestal and, and back away and invite you to come forward to collect it there. Uh, please uh, have your masks on um, and raise or lower them as is most comfortable for you to consume uh, the body and blood of Christ. Uh, Beth, why don't you come around that way, watch the cord and uh, Start us off. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken and shed for you. The body and blood of Christ, broken and shed for you. The body and blood of Christ, broken and shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of Christ, broken and shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of Christ is broken and shed for you. Amen.
Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And do lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto the O Lord ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept to this our bounded duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. I invite you to stand as you are able, and for the heck of it, let's celebrate with the Gloria. Okay. <laughs> Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards all. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, our most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Dad, would you bless us? And the peace of God, the path of all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. Let your Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, who said and will Amen. Amen. Now let us go to love and serve him. Thanks be to God.